Welcome to another edition of Mind, Body, and Spirit. I'm your host, registered dietitian Karen Kowalix. We are out on location for today's show at the seventh annual Nutritious and Delicious Gala. This food tasting competition is sponsored by the Greater Akron Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics to promote National Nutrition Month. Some of the area's best local chefs are here serving up their healthiest and most delicious dishes with the hopes of winning one of three awards. Join us now for the next half hour as we highlight this exciting event and take a look at the latest trends in healthy eating. Spirit. foods here are unique in that um, a lot of the vendors are doing a healthy nutritious spin on things so they're trying to use healthier fresher more local ingredients um, and also have the dish taste taste delicious so when you go around and sample the different dishes from the local vendors you're going to be voting so you're going to be voting on um, what's called the for the best dish so when you purchase a ticket, you are actually supporting our student scholarship fund, um, which helps nutrition students in the area um, that are aspiring to become registered dietitians. All the money from the raffle baskets go directly to the students for our student scholarships. So any student from whether it's from Kent or the University of Akron, we give them uh, we give scholarships to those in the dietetics field. So tell us about the uh, raffle baskets this year. Um, sure. So I asked around for a lot of different donations from the local um, Akron Canton area. We had one actually from my workplace of Fisher's Foods, which is kind of a neat basket with a lot of different unique products. Um, one from Designing Women, which was um, also through a local group that does like knitting and yarn for teaches women how to knit and do um, different yarn works. So we have a shawl and a bag from them. We have a great donation from Smuckers with a lot of their different products as well. We have one that the um, committee actually put together ourselves um, mixed with a sports bag, some water bottles, kind of a get active theme within from the Summit Metro Parks. They gave us a swim pass for one day and uh, LA Fitness gave us a 30-day pass for working out at their facility in Cuyahoga Falls. So kind of a mix of different things. We also got um, a nice flight with a t-shirt uh, from Nuevo and um, a variety of other things as well. So. Tell us uh, what, what you're making today. I have Amish chicken cooked under a brick with a roasted quinoa salad with caramelized onions, roasted mushrooms, roasted carrots, some green beans, and finished with a all-natural bone broth. This is my fourth year at the event. Is it a challenge creating something healthy that's also delicious? No, we do this every day at the hospital, so I, I like the challenge. It's uh, easy to reach for butter, have the deep fryer in the kitchen, but to have something that's healthy and delicious is a great challenge I look forward to. And this dish is going to win this year. We made a chicken marcel this evening, uh, sautéed in olive oil to keep it uh, healthy. And as well, we have a rice peel-off to go along with it and uh, fresh portobello mushrooms. Actually, it was a last-minute thought. You know, we were going to do some type of soup, and we decided to change it to something a little more wholesome. Is it a challenge cooking healthy for people? No, I don't think so. We have a good menu, and uh, we, we try to go and cater to the public for healthy, healthy choices. Uh, you know, things along the lines of just a, a, a you know, chicken breast over rice without the, uh, without the sauce, and, and we can still do the fresh mushrooms with it. Uh, that would be a, a definitely a switch out so that it wouldn't have all the uh, sauce on top as well. But that is cooked in like a light cornstarch, so it's definitely still very healthy. This is the first year that we've done this, so we're very excited. So tell us about the dish you prepared. Um, we have a jambalaya, it has andouille sausage and chicken, um, rice, uh, Cajun seasonings, um, lots of heat, lots of spice. How do you make a good jambalaya? 
lots of spice. <laughs> um, you have to let every, uh, your meat brown so it can turn the colors of the jambalaya and just make sure you have a lot of heat because that's what they look for. Is, is it challenging to find, to cook healthy when you're making dishes like this? That's a very good question. We have altered this recipe. I've taken a lot of the pork out, a lot of the pork fat. We've used vegetable oils. We used a, uh, a low-fat andouille. So we had made some alterations because it is difficult, yes. What, is it, what does it taste like? Well, to have some, it's delicious, thank you. Okay, this is the Earth Fair table and we are doing vegan chocolate chip cookies. Do they taste as good as regular? Actually, yes, they're very, very good. Can you tell us um, why you guys participate in this event? Well, at the University of Akron, they they advertised it, and it sounded really cool. And I really wanted to get out there and meet dietitians and see what it was all about. Why do you want to be a dietitian? Um, the reason I want to be a dietitian is because my family has diabetes, and so I got to learn about it a lot that way. What are you looking forward to trying tonight? Um, actually, I like Blue Door. They have a lot of pastries <laughs> over there, and it looks really healthy and good. So. Spoken like a true dietitian, she wants the pastries. Uh, we did two different things. Um, I like to eat dessert first, so we'll do the vegan um, gluten-free chocolate brownie. And on it there is a vegan ganache, a vegan whipped cream, and a gluten-free vegan twill. Are there any secret ingredients in this brownie? Black beans. What is the reaction generally when people think about black beans. Do you tell them there's black you know beans? What just happened right there, that awkward silence where you're, you know, you're not really sure how they're going to react. Definitely what happens. And how did you get involved with this? Um, well, part of it has to do with my husband and my son having some food sensitivities, um, but really it all started about 10 years ago when I walked into a restaurant as a server and I fell in love with food, went to culinary school and just kind of hit the ground running. Ryan, can you tell us about the dish you made? Yeah, it's a pan-seared chicken with a citrus and fennel uh, rub and it's got a quinoa salad with uh, red peppers and black beans and a ginger beet puree or ginger carrot puree I'm sorry. That sounds very creative. How did you come up with that recipe? I've, I've been doing a few competitions at school lately and I just kind of mixed it in with what I've been doing. Can you tell us a bit, you mentioned school, can you tell us a bit about your background? Yeah I'm a student at Tri-C in the culinary program I graduate in December. GAN's mission is to promote optimal health and nutrition for the population by providing direction and leadership for quality dietetic practice, education, and research. Okay, sorry. This Please. annual nutritious and delicious event is very special in that it forms multiple connections in our community. It helps connect nutrition professionals in the greater Akron area and surrounding areas to work together to promote nutrition in the community. It helps connect nutrition students who are aspiring to become registered dietitians to establish nutrition professionals in the area. It helps connect local restaurants and catering companies to nutrition professionals, which is vital in the promotion of healthier food choices in the community. What's different about your pastries than other restaurants? Well, first of all, um, we make everything fresh every day. So if we don't sell it, it gets thrown away. Um, second of all, um, we don't use any hydrogenated oils. Um, we don't use um, we don't use any corn syrup. It's it's real butter, um, uh, unbleached, unbromated flour. So they're real in, real ingredients. Um, we do a European breakfast pastry, as opposed to what you normally find in the states, donuts and things like that. So each one of these pastries has 27 layers of butter in it. Um, in addition to, for instance, the chocolate croissant has uh, half an ounce of Varona co uh, chocolate in it. And uh, the cheese danish, uh, you know, we have three different cheese danish. So it's more of a European style pastry, not really all that sweet. We use real ingredients and we make everything fresh every day. Tell us about your background. How did you become a baker? Well, actually, I started off in the culinary field. I was, I went, graduated ICASI, Loretta Paganini's culinary school. I was a saute cook for about three and a half years, and I just always loved baking. And I just, my chef aunt told me I have to learn from someone who loves what they do, not from someone who just wants to teach and get it over with. And then I met Michael one day. I just showed up at his restaurant, and... He was like, come in, and I did, and now I'm the baker there, and we're partners. It's great that we Bria, work together. Bria baked everything that you see here, 
and it's kind of a, a, a team effort. So someone did make the dough, and I laminated the pastry, so I folded the butter in. But Bria actually baked everything off, and that's that's quite a uh, it's quite a quite a task. I um, was an infantry officer in the Marine Corps for 20 years, and I always wanted to open a bakery. So uh, about about 10 years into my career, I thought. Uh, Maybe it was more than a hobby, it was always a hobby. And then I started taking it seriously and about a year before I retired, I went to a French-based pastry arts program. And then uh, when I retired, um, we really couldn't afford to open a bakery anywhere else. We didn't have a million dollars laying around. And my, my mother-in-law actually owned uh, a restaurant, the restaurant. And so, uh, so at first, it was for the first two years, it was myself, an, an oven, a mixer, and a pastry case, and I would, I would bake the pastry. And after about two years, our business grew to a point where we could afford to, to buy the, the business from my mother-in-law, and then we made it what it is today. We do breakfast and lunch, and then uh, a little bit more unique breakfasts and lunch than, uh, than the typical what you find. And then uh, about seven months ago, we started to do uh, uh, dinner, uh, again, a uh, unique. Uh, our chef for that is uh, has a Michelin star, and uh, and we do it on Friday and Saturday nights. Uh, we're located inside Akron uh, City Hospital, and the concept behind it is usually uh, to uh, provide good, healthy food for uh, customers. We cater to the hospital a lot of the employees and stuff, but we still cater to the outside people also. Tell us about the dish you prepared tonight and how you selected it for this event. Uh, Virtues is known for their roasted eggplant soup. It seems to be one of the uh, most well-liked dishes that we have in the hospital, and it's been with us for the nine years since we've been started. So hospital food, you know, it doesn't have the best reputation. How do you, do you get customers? How do you convince people that a restaurant inside a hospital is going to be delicious? Um, we do it by our food, the way our food looks. We have advertisements all over the hospital and on uh, billboards of pictures of our food, so it's not like traditional hospital food, and we just have a different atmosphere through it all. Yeah, a lot of people are surprised. Say we're the diamond in the rough. You come into the hospital not expecting the food and quality that we provide for you. How do you make something delicious and also nutritious? the ingredients are most important. You have to use fresh ingredients. We try to use all fresh ingredients and we use local purveyors also trying to keep everything in a local healthy and all the dietitians check most of our ingredients also. So how are pears used in food? Pears can be done, anything you can do with an apple that you can do with a pear. Whether it be a pie, whether it be a salad, an entree, uh, use as a garnish, any way you want. Drinks, you can use pears anyway. What we're doing tonight is we're doing a, a pairing of cheeses and, uh, and different pears that go with different cheeses and wines. And at the same time, giving some information, uh, putting some crackers together with it, and it's educating people on how to tell when a pear's ripe. Are people generally surprised that you can use pears in so many different ways with cooking? Yes. That's one of the things that we've been trying to emphasize because most pears are eaten out of hand as snacking. We want to let them know that they can be used in different ways. A lot of people don't realize that pears don't, they think they all have the same flavor, where they have different consistency, different flavors, just like apples. Tell us about the history of this event. How did it get started? How long has it been going on? And, and what, do, what can people expect? Well, I know it's been going on for about seven years, and it got started in order to help the students with scholarships because we know it's very expensive to be a student. So this has been a fantastic event that we've been able to help students out for the last couple years. So, What can attendees expect in regards to the food? Well, how does it work? Well, we ask restaurants to come out. As you can see, uh, a lot of the restaurants bring out wonderful food, so you can expect not to go home hungry. And you can expect to have the greatest food possible when you come to an event like this. And a lot of networking goes along, so you never know who you're going to meet. Well, obviously, it's delicious, no matter what. And then nutrition comes along with the RDs that help put along the food. And we ask that a lot of the restaurants try and keep along the same nutrition guidelines that we would, as uh, RDs, recommend. And so we're just letting the public know that food can not only be delicious, but nutritious, too. 
So um, in front of you are just our fresh micros by themselves. Um, so over here we have micro cilantro, a micro wasabi mustard, uh, micro De Detroit dark red beet, as well as a buckwheat lettuce and our spicy triton radish. Uh, and then the three of them over there are passing out our dishes for the evening. Um, so starting on the farthest right over there is a caprese, uh, basically like a micro caprese salad with um, our micro arugula and our micro basil a cherry tomato at mozzarella cheese. And then next to her, we also are making our uh, handcrafted guacamole with our micro cilantro on top. And then next to that is a um, red, uh, the Detroit red beet infused goat cheese spread with uh, topped with that Detroit red beet as well. So the microgreens is just that first stage of growth. It's right before you start getting the true leaves and developing what's gonna end up producing the vegetables. Inside of these microgreens, you have the whole counterpart flavor. So everything from this radish, you have a little piece and it tastes exactly like that full grown radish and that small little sprout. How are these used generally? Um, currently at the moment, uh, restaurants and juice bars are the ones predominantly using them, uh, but they are known for their nutritional value, so soon we are trying to bump up into health foods and health stores, try to get that uh, information out there about their nutritional value. So. Tell us about the dish you made tonight. Um, it's a vegan uh, dessert dish. Um, it's gluten-free and dairy-free. It's a avocado chocolate mousse. And it's made with just the five ingredients that we have here. It's made with honey, um, almond milk, cocoa powder, avocados, and vanilla. And it's just run up in a food processor. Now, what is the reaction? It doesn't look like there's avocado in this. What is the reaction to people? They like it. It's a little surprised. It doesn't taste like avocado. It has, it has the good, it well, has. What it basically does is, it's not a non-chemical reaction. You know, so if you have the, like an acid, if you put an acid in a salsa or something with the avocado, it changes it. But with the avocado, what it does is you're adding cocoa powder and honey and sugar, all pure ingredients, and it just blends right without. Now, we could add a liqueur to this, like Grand Marnier or even almonds or not, but we found out this is in its purest form. That it's just a, if it, now, you can make this like a dark chocolate mousse and add less honey. But this is a, we, we, we're sort of excited when we had this event that we found this dessert because we're always asked for a gluten-free, um, low-fat, um, dairy-free dessert, and oh, we found one. So this is our new. This is gonna be our new avocado mousse. Well, tonight I made a gluten-free uh, buckwheat chocolate chip cookie. It's made with fresh ground raw buckwheat groats, Ohio maple syrup, and vegan chocolate chip cookies. And we also made a spring roll that I learned how to make from some of our uh, refugee population here in the North Hill neighborhood. Some good friends of mine. And there are rice paper with raw vegetables, and you have fresh herbs. There's cilantro, dill, and a Thai basil. And we made three sauces, a soy garlic, um, a fresh turmeric sauce with tahini that's kind of like a sweet and spicy mustard, and a uh, fresh ginger and uh, peanut sauce. And then, of course, our kale chips, because kale chips rule, and they're good for you. <laughs> so is, is it challenging to cook healthy and delicious? Absolutely not. It's a blast. About your, your restaurant, what's the concept behind it? Uh, farm to table as much as humanly possible, organic in the middle of this ridiculous weather. And I made spring rolls today because I figured if I said spring at least 50 times, it might actually happen, right? So today we are sampling a guacamole hummus. And it is made with um, just actually a very few ingredients. Uh, there's garbanzo beans, uh, avocado, fresh cilantro, and red onion. And mix those together and it's a great healthy snack. You know, a Vitamix is so much more than a smoothie maker. In fact, it can really be used in every meal that you make at home. It can be smoothies, it can be hot soups in the summertime, it can be frozen sorbets. It really can do anything for you, no matter what time you're eating. What is the difference between me buying a sorbet in the store and making it with the Vitamix? It really is because of everything Everything you know that's going into the Vitamix is gonna be fresh, they're whole food, and um, there's no extra added preservatives. You can monitor the sugar or lack thereof um, so it really is just a great way to alter all of your diet. A little history on Totally Cooked we established in 1998 providing creative cuisine with a healthful tone which is why we're very excited to be part of this event it's our very first time here with uh, GAND and the association is uh, very um, um, good for all of us we're happy and excited to be here and um, we are doing a fresh uh, smoked uh, chicken 
on a corn tortilla with a uh, corn and black bean salsa, as well as providing an avocado, uh, avocado yogurt cream and also doing a vegan black brownie this evening, black bean brownie. You seem very passionate about healthy food. How did that come about? An interest in health and, and uh, valued in the nutrition arts. I've seen challenges through my career as a chef, watching people struggle to manage what it is that they'd like to achieve with health and wellness. Food is elemental to that process. Dining and uh, sharing food is communal, and a lot of people struggle with how to manage a good healthful approach, good education, the sharing of knowledge together uh, has always been part of my repertoire with helping my clients uh, through the years. Is it challenging to make something taste delicious and healthy? Not when you're fundamentally sound in the basics of spices, herbs, and fresh food. Uh, I think that's one of the challenges is you're aware that people struggle with the ability to obtain fresh food, what to do with the recipe, where to resource the ingredients, and fortunately we're blessed in this particular area with a growing mix of growers, agribusiness, and people that we can resource everything from fresh hogs to microgreens. So it's becoming easier for us. Thank you for joining us at the 7th Annual Nutritious and Delicious Gala. We hope you enjoyed our preview and we hope you're eating healthy during National Nutrition Month. For Mind, Body and Spirit, I'm Karen Kowalix reminding you to eat more whole foods, keep moving and stay positive. We'll see you next time.